Hello, and welcome to our Getting to Know Batfish series, where we showcase key capabilities of Batfish and how they can be used as part of your network automation workflow. My name is Matt. In this video, I'll show you how to validate network forwarding changes using Batfish. Network engineers frequently make changes that impact forwarding behavior, adding new routes, opening or closing flows, routing traffic through different devices, etc. These changes are often hard to get right and hard to validate. The risks of deploying a bad change can be huge, potentially causing outages or security breaches. For these reasons, having a powerful change validation process is crucial for modern networks. This video will show you how Batfish can help get your changes right. With Batfish, change validation can be proactive, meaning you can validate your changes offline before you deploy them to the network. It's also network scale. Batfish analyzes full end-to-end -end network behavior, allowing it to find bugs caused by interactions between devices far away from each other. And it's comprehensive. Batfish can validate the forwarding behavior for all possible flows. This allows it to find bugs you may never have thought to test. All of this makes Batfish the ideal tool for your change validation workflow. Let's get started. As usual, we'll begin by initializing the current snapshot of our network in Batfish. Batfish will parse the configuration files, build a model of the network, and automatically compute the ribs and fibs. We're going to validate two different changes to our network. The network has two host devices connected to Leaf1, a web server and a database server. On the other end, we have border routers that connect to the external network. The network is provisioned with failover redundancy for the core routers. All traffic is normally routed through core 1, but will automatically switch to core 2 in case of a failure or during maintenance. In this scenario, we want to service core 1, so we're going to shift traffic to core 2. We'll implement a change to cost out core 1 and verify that it does not affect reachability to the hosts from the external network. First, let's test the current forwarding behavior using the traceroute question. We want to see how external to host traffic is routed, so we'll use the destinations parameter to specify traffic destined to the host devices and the start location parameter to specify traffic entering through the border router's external interfaces. The results include a flow from each border router and all possible paths of each flow. As we can see in the traces column, both flows are routed through core 1, which is all we're concerned with here. For more information about the traceroute question, see our previous video in this series, Introduction to Forwarding Analysis. For now, having confirmed that traffic is being routed through core 1 as expected, let's go ahead with our change to cost it out so that traffic is routed through core 2 instead. To cost out core 1, we'll raise the OSPF cost of each interface from 1 to 500. Now we'll take our change and initialize a new candidate snapshot in Batfish. We now have two snapshots in Batfish we can compare. Remember this change only exists in Batfish. We won't push anything until we have full confidence that it's correct. Now we're ready to validate our change and we'll do this using a two-step process. Step 1 validates that the change has the intended effect. No external to host traffic is routed through core 1. Step 2 validates that it has no unintended effects. In this case, the change should not affect reachability of external to host traffic. To validate that no external to host traffic is routed through core 1, we'll use the reachability question to search for external to host traffic that is routed through core 1. If Batfish's comprehensive search does not find any such flows, we know that core 1 is correctly costed out. We see three new parameters here. Source IPs specifies to search all possible source IP addresses. By default, Batfish will search source IPs appropriate to each start location. Transit locations specifies to search for flows that transit core 1. And actions specifies to include flows that are dropped as well as those that are successfully delivered, which is the default. Good. Reachability was unable to find any external to host flow that transits core 1, so we know we have successfully costed it out. Now let's validate that costing out core 1 has no unintended effects. To do that, we'll compare the forwarding behavior of the change snapshot against the original using the differential reachability question. Batfish will search for flows that match the specified criteria in one of the snapshots, but not the other. There should be no differences since external to host reachability should be the same going through core 2 as it is going through core 1. 
Unfortunately, these results show that there is a difference of reachability. Some traffic that was being accepted in the reference snapshot before the change is being null routed in the change snapshot. If we had deployed this change, there would have been a loss of connectivity. Thankfully, Batfish was able to identify the bug before we deployed the change. The results include an example flow from each border router. Each flow comes with detailed traces of all the paths it can take through the network in each snapshot. These traces help us to quickly diagnose the problem. Core 2 has an old static route for 2.128.1.1 that should have been removed. Having identified and diagnosed the problem, we can remove the bad static route in an updated change snapshot. First, we'll initialize the fixed snapshot, and then we'll repeat step one to confirm that core one is still costed out. Great. Now let's repeat step two to make sure that there are no other problems we need to fix. Great. There are no other bugs, so this change can be safely pushed to the network. Let's recap the steps we took to validate this change. Step one validated that the change does what it's supposed to, move traffic from core one to core two. Step two validated that our change doesn't break anything. The end-to-end -end behavior of the network is unaffected. Together, these steps give us complete confidence that we can safely deploy our change and service core one. Now let's validate another change to the same network. Unlike the previous scenario, this time we do want to affect end-to-end -end reachability, and we will use the same validation process to ensure that our change has the intended effect and that it has no unintended effects. For this scenario, imagine that we have developed and tested a new web service on the web server and are now ready to open it to the outside world. Let's start by using the traceroute question to confirm that the web service is not currently accessible from the external network. Our parameters specify HTTP traffic to the web server from the external network. As you can see, the flow is dropped by the ingress ACL outside to inside on each border router. This is where we'll make our change. This snippet shows the original ACL definition, and the first line filters traffic to the host subnet. As you can see, currently SSH is the only TCP traffic permitted. Here's the updated version of the ACL. We've added this second line to permit HTTP traffic, and we're opening it to the entire subnet because we already filter per host on the leaf router. Let's initialize our change snapshot. And as before, we'll use the same two-step validation process. Step one validates that the change has the intended effect. Our web service is now available from the external network. Step two validates that the change has no unintended effects. No other traffic is affected. To validate that the web service is always reachable from the external network, we'll search for flows that can't reach it by setting the actions parameter to failure. Good. Batfish comprehensively searched all external flows destined to the web service and verified that all will be delivered successfully. As before, to validate that there are no unintended effects, we'll use the differential reachability question to compare our change snapshot against the original. This time, we know some traffic has changed, namely external traffic to the web service. We'll ask Batfish to search for differences that affect any other traffic using the invert search parameter. This directs Batfish to search outside the specified header space instead of within it. Unfortunately, our change had a broader impact than we intended, and Batfish finds us some affected flows. In this case, we see a flow that was previously dropped by the border router ACLs, but is now being delivered to the database server. We can also see that this is HTTP traffic, which is supposed to be blocked at the leaf router. So we've quickly diagnosed the problem. The leaf router is not properly filtering traffic to the hosts. It permits HTTP to both hosts rather than just the web server. Having fixed the bad ACL on the leaf router, we'll initialize an updated change snapshot. Now let's validate this snapshot. As before, step one validates that all traffic to the web service will be delivered. Great, this time step two validates that no other flows are affected by the change. Using our two-step change validation process, we were quickly able to find a bug in our first change attempt and then validate that our second attempt has the intended effect. 
No more and no less. Thanks for watching this video of network forwarding change validation using Batfish. You've seen how Batfish can help provide full-scale, comprehensive change validation proactively so you can deploy changes to your network with complete confidence. If you want to learn more about how to use Batfish for validating changes to your network, or other ways Batfish can help you build and maintain your network, please leave a comment or come find us on Slack or GitHub. You'll find links in the description. And don't forget to check out the other videos in the Getting to Know Batfish series. Thanks!